Well, hello again. <clears throat> Sue here, and um, this is uh, part two of painting lace. And as you can see, I've got all my colors in. I've got all my shading in. I'm ready now for all those little dots. I will not subject you to listening and watching to me put every single dot in here. This is not fair. It's going to take forever. But I do want to just give you a heads up on how we're going to do this. I've made up my colors. I've got a very, very dark green. It's almost black. And for that, I used, uh, I made a green and then I added purple to it. I made a very dark green and then I added purple to it, which made it even darker. Now, I know the rule is that if you add a complementary color to another color that you get, it, it darkens the color. Well, it may darken it, but it also grays it down and dulls it. So what I do is I add the complement and the analogous color, which is the one that's next to it. So instead of using red to make my green darker, I use purple, which is red and blue together. Or you could just use a little bit of red and a little bit of blue and make your own purple. I'm lazy. I use dioxazine purple, it's also very dark. This is a more olivey green. It's also quite dark, but it's a different shade of green. This is a gray. There's a lot of gray in this. And this is a very much lighter, uh, pinkier uh, olive. Now, just like the cloth itself has several different colors in it in the shading, the holes have different colors depending on how how deep they are. This here is going to be very, very dark um, because it's, it's raised up high and you're looking at the grass through the holes in the shadow. So the green is almost black. Um, same here. Um, these are all going to be very dark. And then in between the bigger holes, there's these smaller ones, little tiny dots and just funny, odd little shapes that are part of the needlework. And those, I'm just going to um, make a gray color. And we may even soften some of those later. So there really isn't much for you to see here. I think maybe I'll just start painting these in here for right now. And then... Um, We'll end the video as part two, and then um, when I've got it all done, I'll come back and do part three and do the grass and the shadow underneath here. Okay, is that a deal? All right, so we'll just go ahead and start. I'm using a very small um, number one synthetic brush. Um, it's got a real, real sharp point on it, and that's going to be handy. I'm going to start right in the middle here where the darkest colors are, and in here where it's very dark, and uh, just start filling in my little holes. Tedious work. Very tedious work. I'm going to make them slightly larger than what they show on the uh, on my pencil work. Um, and I'm doing the biggest ones in the dark green. <laughs> Excuse the sniffling. It is winter here in Iowa. It's a fairly mild day, but my nose just drips. I can't seem to keep it from doing that. So if you hear me snuffling like a little kid, I'm sorry about that. It's either that or let my nose run, which is not an option. All right. 
Now you can see already, these are just the biggest ones. And I'm going by the shapes that I put in here in the first place because they are the shapes that were the holes as they are in folded fabric. So obviously they're not all the same shape. They're not all the same size because they fold. They get very narrow where they become compressed by the folding of the fabric. These are all the funny little things that make your realism painting more real is to pay attention to these tiny little things. They seem insignificant. Who cares what shape each one of these holes is? Well, evidently I do. <laughs> and I'm gonna use some of this gray now and I'm gonna have it be not quite so dark and fill in some of these small little places and they're small, but against a white background, they're important and they're going to show up. And as you go along, tedious work like this, you can find yourself kind of speeding along, trying to get it done and becoming sloppy. It will, it will, it will show. So if you get tired, stop. Nobody says you have to do it in a day. It sometimes takes me weeks, months, to finish a painting that's got this much detail in it. Unless you're doing a commission and you have time constraints, there's no reason to hurry these things. There's still some big ones down here. And a big one here that got squished there. A little, put a little green in, even with the gray. All right, well, you've got the idea. And it makes the shadow even deeper than it was before. So I will continue with this tedious work and see you sometime in the near future. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.